All right. How's it going, guys? We got Martin Jacobson with us now. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. How are you guys? We're doing pretty good. Pretty we good. had a really good first day. We raised over $1,900 yeah. for oh, Reg wow. Charities. So it was pretty fun. We had a good time on stream, and we're glad to have you on board with us today. We had some technical difficulties yesterday, but we're hoping today... Today's been running a lot smoother, except for me just putting myself on mute all day. So we're going to try to avoid that. Uh, so you're still grinding right now on PokerStars, right? I am, yeah. yeah. Uh, only got one table there right now. Okay, that's cool. Um, Probably if, starting to keep ones. <laughs> if we uh, get some hands or something, we'll uh, sure. load it up and... I'm gonna pull up your table right now. Um, first, do you want to like kind of introduce yourself to Twitch chat? I guess I'm most, sure most of them most know. Most of us who are gonna know you. Most of them know who you are, but <laughs> maybe just give them a little brief overview. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm uh, Martin Jacobson. Uh, I'm a professional poker player from Sweden, uh, now living in London, and. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Have you won anything before? Uh, I won one card and I won. Uh, one time? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, for, the, for those of you guys who don't know, Martin Jacobson is the 2014 World Series of Poker main event champion. He beat out thousands and thousands of players. Um, it was amazing. I mean, how? my first question for you would be like, how did this change your life? I mean, obviously it's a lot of money. But what's what's been different? Um, I know you've been doing a lot of good, a lot of um, you're a red charity ambassador. But I mean, is there anything specific in your life that might have changed? Uh, you know, aside from what what life was like before. Um, you know, it seems weird, but nothing really changed. Um, yeah. I I was uh, I was already playing yeah, um, playing quite a lot and quite high even before I won. So. After I won, I just, I don't know, my life just continued uh, as usual. Obviously, there was, uh, especially in the beginning, there was a bit more uh, media attention and uh, right. uh, some fun events and stuff that I got to, the opportunity to attend. Uh, but other than that, it, was, it really hasn't changed much. I'm still, still me. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, one thing that I wanted to point out too, because like when I met you in Punta Cana, like, a lot of people they come across like instant fame like that and it almost changes them and when i was able to talk to you in punta cana it was like martin jacobson is still martin jacobson like i can just have a conversation with him you're normal like you're <laughs> just like you're just well, like, you see, like you yeah myself like it's not it's not something i like immediately think of or associate myself as and so you know for for me it's like it's not that big of a deal <laughs> right even though it's amazing, like thinking back and like I'll always remember remember that moment. It's a huge achievement and whatnot, but it's not it's not who I am or what I've become or, or anything like that. That's good to hear. Do you play less now that you have like you know what I mean? I mean I don't I'm not gonna ask what your bankroll was before and after, but I mean do you play like less just because, you know, there's a bit more comfort there or No, it's it was never really about that. Like I wasn't even before the main event, I wasn't I wasn't necessarily grinding to uh, to make a living. Like, but I've always played just for like a passion for the game. Um, so uh, even after like yeah, like I said, like much hasn't really changed. I'm still playing the the tournaments I want to play. I don't play all the super high rollers or, or go crazy, you know. Um, I um, I just play a few super high rollers sheets here, and uh, I choose some. Uh, I, I try to be selective which ones I want to play, um, and uh, yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm still playing some really low stuff. Like you'll you'll still see me in like the big fifty five and, and, and stuff. Nice. Like, <laughs> I still just play like, play for, for purely for like passion for the game. That's awesome. That's really nice to hear. competitive as well, so it's uh, <laughs> awesome. That's a big reason as well. For sure, yeah, it's super cool. Um, when you first started out your career, you were mostly like a satellite player, and that's kind of what launched you into the big stakes, I guess, right? You won a satellite to an EPT, where you finished second, I believe. 
Yeah, I actually started it started a bit before that. Um, I, my first big win was uh, a satellite to the WSCP main event. Yeah. So, and that was back in uh, 2008. Uh, so I wanted, I think I was one of the last qualifiers. So I won it super late in, in May. And um, I was only, I was only 20 years old at the time. And uh, I was, uh, I had the option to either take the, the value of the package, which was, I believe it was $12,000 uh, uh, or I could opt uh, to go and play. And uh, I was only 20 years old at the time, but I, I um, when I checked the calendar, the main event was supposed to start uh, three days after my 21st birthday. Uh, so I was, oh, wow. <laughs> I thought, it was, I thought it, if that was a sign of anything, so I, I opted to, to go and play. And uh, <laughs> it, it wow, nice. so well. Actually, I was in Vegas by myself because back then I didn't, I didn't have any friends in, in poker yet, obviously. Like, I'd never played like a big live tournament, and uh, none of my, uh, my none of my uh, uh, friends back then had had that sort of budget to go, and I couldn't afford to invite anyone and pay for them. So I, I went to Vegas by myself at 20 years old. Wow. <laughs> 21st birthday in Vegas and uh, played the main event and busted the third hand. Wow, <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, at least uh, you won it eventually, though. At least, at least yeah. the, at least that story ended well at, at some point in your career. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's so, awesome. Uh, that's quite funny. Yeah, looking back now, uh, I was like, wow, well, this, this is what poker's like. <laughs> <laughs> but I never, I never regretted the decision to go. You know, I, I had a blast and. And then um, after that, I, I got back to London, uh, not to London, uh, back to Sweden, where I lived at the time. And um, um, just like I, I immediately, it didn't put me off that uh, it didn't go well. Like I, the competitor in me, I guess, uh, just wanted to get back, back in there and, and compete. So I kept playing the satellites and. Uh, I managed to win a, a satellite to uh, EPT uh, Budapest. Oh, nice. Uh, that was in October, I think, of uh, the same year. And um, in that one, it went uh, a bit better. I uh, got third place. Wow. Oh. Uh, for yeah, quite a quite a bit of money. So that definitely uh, changed my situation and my my ability to to keep playing. Um, so yeah, uh, I never really like took the decision, you know, to become a professional poker player. It just yeah. sort of have, I just, I guess, choose to keep playing and, uh, and keep venturing into like poker and like what it was all about back then. And then yeah, that was it. That's awesome. Because before you were into poker, you were in school for a, to be a chef, right? That's right. Yeah, I was uh, in culinary school for uh, for three years, and then I did uh, the military service in uh, Sweden as well. And awesome. At the time, I was uh, I think I started playing poker in my second year in school, uh, so I was I was playing already back then. But obviously, as a hobby, uh, I was playing a little bit online with my friends. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, like, do you still have a passion for cooking at all, or? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't cook as much as I, I would like to, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I think I'll always have a, a passion for for both food and cooking. Well, that's good. Um, do you? What's your life like outside of poker? Like everyone knows Martin Jacobson, World Series Poker Main Event winner. What are you doing when you're not playing poker? Like, what do you enjoy doing? Your hobbies? Uh, I like to uh, I like to work out and run and uh, and lift weights and do a little bit of boxing now uh, and apart from that I like I like to watch sports um, most I watch uh, mostly MMA these days um, and then um, yeah there really is. It feels like there's not that much time uh, apart from playing poker and right, all yeah. the traveling and, and stuff. So poker does take up a lot of time for it sure. It feels like that's my life. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's our life too. <laughs> we travel. Yeah, we travel quite a bit. For Pokemon. It's like this is the only real downtime I've had anyway this year, and so it's kind of yeah. It's, the travel definitely wears on you for sure. It does, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a preference of playing over like live poker compared to online poker? Mm, if I had to choose, I, I guess I would pick live, uh, but I, I definitely wouldn't want to choose. Like I like the mix, you know. After a while playing online for for a while, like during Scoop or or Dolly, you could have won a bit more intense online tournament series, and you really can't wait to just sit down at a at a live poker table and like see people. <laughs> <laughs> get back the, the social aspect and like all the, the live reads and all that sort of stuff you know um but at the same time after 70 weeks in vegas and like sitting next to uh, a bunch of sweaty uh, smelly people i can't <laughs> wait to just be in your <laughs> be in your comfy clothes at home you know, playing a bunch of tables and i cannot have to wait for someone to uh, make a decision it's just so much faster and so much more efficient and comfortable playing online. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you're a major you're... ambassador for, I feel like, even just the poker community, but also for Reg Charity, which is what we're doing this all for. What's kind of like your involvement in the charity? Um, what? Well, give you a bit of a background. Uh, so it started uh, once I made the, the final table. I knew that I wanted to get involved in, in charity in, in some sort of way, and uh, uh, I uh, I've heard I had heard of uh, Reg before that, and uh, but I hadn't really uh, looked into it, like what it what it meant and what it how it worked. Uh, so once I started researching it, and I just immediately felt like this is perfect, like this is just what I was looking for, like. It's uh, charity is for a great cause. It's highly efficient. Like someone else uh, who knows a lot more about uh, charity work than me have done all the re their research and handpicked these charities. So they, they know it's like every dollar goes gets to use at a maximum effort, and that's uh, obviously very important because um, a lot of uh, other more well-known charities aren't as efficient, and there's a lot of um, a lot of funds get lost in in uh, um, in uh, administration uh, costs. Um, so that's a uh, that's a shame, and um, that's where a break uh, becomes so much more efficient because it's uh, picking the charities that where. Uh, not only are the most efficient in terms of, of value for uh, for the funds, but also what saves more lives because there's different types um, different types of charities. You know, like some charities might seem like a great cause uh, because it has an emotional attachment to it. Well, Reg looks at look at it for like straight like as a more rational mindset and just see what does this, this uh, charity actually um, contribute to, or like in what way does this charity uh, change lives or save lives, you know? Um, so um, straight away I knew that I wanted to get involved, so I contacted them and obviously they were happy to work together and then uh, things went well, I won uh, the tournament and then we, we just kind of um, snowball from there. Um, they asked if I wanted to become uh, an ambassador. I, of course, said yes, and I felt very honored um, being able to to represent and hopefully inspire other uh, poker players uh, to to also become members and help with the cause. And hands up for us because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. We're doing right now. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean for. For, I don't know, I mean, I kind of, personally, the reason why I wanted to set up this charity stream was um, I only recently, the last couple of years, I had a really big career change from finance to working in poker, and 
I, I used to um, you know, do a lot of charity work when I was younger and I kind of I was thinking back I'm like I've had a really good year like life is so good um, I'm like I need to get back to some of the things that made me happier when I was younger too so I was like I need to start getting more into charity stuff and I was like I travel so much and it would be nice to just take uh, a week you know during the holidays and try to you know raise some money so hopefully I don't know maybe we can go somewhere with this maybe, you know maybe get some more traction and do this you know maybe you know a couple times a year or make it like you know an annual thing over Christmas and we'll see you know it's hard because mm -hmm. you know we didn't have many followers um on Twitch or anything yet but we're trying to you know it's nice that we have so many pros such as yourself that are getting behind it and they're you know Andrew Barber yesterday he matched all donations when Danielle and Jamie were on the stream and he's matching them when he's on next week so it's kind of nice um that we have you guys to to promote and help with it so you know we really appreciate it yeah of course um yeah speaking speaking of which uh, uh i wanted to say that uh i would be happy to match all the donations uh that are being made tonight perfect awesome thank you so much yeah we'll let you know what whatever comes through and you know i think maybe i'll just uh send a tweet out <laughs> yeah, for sure. awesome yeah. i think uh, adam has some more questions so i'll just uh, uh I, first of all nice hand and good luck this hand i guess <laughs> <laughs> here i'll throw it on there so that we can get it in the corner, like on the bottom left or something. Yeah. Is there more to this screen than that I can see? I that's a silly question. Uh, I got your table up there as well now, so it would. Yeah, no, cool. Yeah, we've got it on a three-minute delay, so you should be okay. All right. So that hand should be coming up. Um, do you have any plans for next year? Like, are you going anywhere? Got anything yeah. in the works? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, uh, my first stop will be Austin Millions. Yeah. Um, in January, my mid January, so beginning of Feb. Yeah. Um, then in uh, February, I might I might be going to uh, Cape Town uh, to visit my girlfriend. She's from there, and she's going back now. Okay. Um, for a few months, and uh, so I'll probably be there for uh, for a few weeks, and then back to Europe uh, beginning of March. And I believe there's a, a tournament in. in uh, uh, Sochi, Sochi, Russia. Yeah. And um, one in uh, uh, Macau as well. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, sounds like you're yeah. you've got a busy yeah, start to the season. Beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah. There is uh, in Montreal and uh, Barcelona, I think, in in April. Yeah. And then there's Scoop, of course. And then. Uh, something else no then straight to Vegas I, I guess okay cool for, for the here. yeah where did you learn to play poker I'm curious I know that you said um you know you won your first satellite I believe you said 2008 yeah uh where did you learn like how yes. did you get into it um I mean you know poker is changing every single day people are just so good they have HUDs online and like they're just you know there's so many good coaches out there so um I guess my first question two-part question where did you learn and how are you keeping up with um you know the you know, poker level, skill level is changing all the time. Right. So the first one, I um, I learned poker um, mostly through like watching it on uh, uh, like TV coverage. Like this is back in the day. Uh, yeah. Watching uh, like high stakes poker and like those like the WPT uh, uh, coverage, and, and that, that's kind of what like got my interest uh, in the beginning. And then I, was, I remember I was reading, uh, there was a bunch of like poker magazines like in Swedish back then. Uh, I don't think they exist anymore, unfortunately, <laughs> but back then they were. And uh, I was, uh, uh, I had some sort of uh, subscription, I guess, and uh, was reading a lot of them. And then uh, a few poker books as well. Um, and then I was just started playing you know, with friends um, and kind of, kind of naturally like learning on the way uh, as I was playing and I, I realized that um, I guess both my, 
my interest was a little bit higher and I also had like uh, a natural talent compared to my friends. Um, so uh, yeah, that was it. And then I started playing online and then was my, my learning was progressing a lot faster because uh, you can get, obviously you can get a bigger volume in a short time period. Cool. Uh, oh, and the second question, sorry. Uh, so today I mostly, uh, I watch quite a bit of videos, like instruction videos. Uh, I discuss poker with, uh, with my friends and I use a little bit of the software that's available. Like uh, uh, Holden Resources and uh, PO Solver. You're in hand right now. We can. <laughs> <laughs> you're, we're watching you. We have the table off too, so oh, yeah, okay. I see you're, you're in the big blind. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> this might sound funny, but I'm not great at a multi. Uh... Oh, it's all good. So we're like, you know what? Go ahead and play the hand. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in the big blind. Three clubs. Min, min dead. All right. Yeah. It's a empire. <laughs> oh, we got a call. The funny thing is, like, I'm only playing two tables right now. Yeah. Uh, I could probably play like 15 tables better than oh, wow. two tables. I'm speaking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> 15 <laughs> tables. Wow. Is that the most you play? Easy. Is that the most you play? 15 at a time? Mm, yeah, these days. Wow, when I was younger. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and also, poker, poker was easier. Yeah, poker was definitely a lot easier back in the day. Yeah, even though, like, you didn't have, you didn't have to play it that well yourself. Like, right. you, you just participating was, like, plus EV. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing the rules and, like, not oh, nice. holding best hand too often. <laughs> it was good to have. Nice hand, nice hand. Just flop top hair. What a life. We have a question in the chat. Uh, oh, it's from Martin, actually. He's uh, our friend Martin. He works at uh, one of the casinos, actually, that uh, that's here in town. He says, Martin, question from a fellow Martin. During the final table, you showed an, an extreme amount of patience and ability to overcome mm -hmm. adversity. How stressful was the grind and how mentally tough was it throughout the final table? Uh, it was quite, quite stressful. Um, probably the most stressful environment that I've ever been in, at least until till this point. Uh, but you know, I was with the with the break and everything, I had such a long time to to prepare, not just like technically but also mentally. So like, I knew it was gonna be super intense and um, I feel like I I managed to like get in the zone and just grind it out and like not think of anything else. So like I really had no distractions whatsoever. So I just put all my energy into into playing my best. And, uh, yeah, it worked, worked out. For sure. How did you prepare for that final table? Just sort of like a leading question. To I that. think you had kind of mentioned to me that you ran quite a few simulations, right? Right. That's right. That was like I actually that was before. <laughs> Before all the simulations that are being run today, you know, all the softwares yeah. and stuff. So we kind of did our own uh, through actually playing. So, so we're trying to play as many as many simulations as possible. Yeah. Uh, where we basically set up the final table uh, so um, all the stacks and everything were correct. And then I wrote, uh, I wrote players, uh, like, uh, players uh, profiles to all. Uh, to uh, all the finalists, and I just gave it to my friends. So like, whoever got, um... sorry, I didn't have again. Okay, That's okay. <laughs> no, go for it, go for it. We're happy to pause and watch you play poker. <laughs> right. So if you guys haven't picked up yet, uh, Martin is at the top of the table there, right. and picks um... up a pot. <laughs> So, um, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. Well, you're saying um, that you gave your friends profiles 
Right. Click on table. So we set up the final table uh, online, and then um, we uh, we managed to get uh, uh, all the stacks in order, the, the blinds, and everything. So everything was exactly like uh, it was going to play out. And then I was playing myself, obviously, and my friends were taking turns and playing the, the different profiles. And then as we were playing, we would uh, discuss the different like different plays and the hand ranges and like different strategies from different positions and like depending on what they they were to uh, depending on what my opponents might do how would that affect my strategy and like what how should I adapt uh, so that was super helpful especially giving getting um, opinions and um, um, thoughts from um, like eight or nine other like really high level uh, poker players, so I really learned a lot just uh, by discussing, you know, where, as we were playing. Can you tell us, uh, you know, which of those pros like helped you out during that process? Sorry, what? Can you tell us which of those pros uh, helped you out during that process? Yeah, it was uh, it was quite a we had quite a big pool actually of of, uh, of uh, players and friends because uh, we needed. So it was basically it was set up as a as a sitting a one table tournament, mm -hmm. and uh, we needed uh, we needed nine players to fill the whole thing to get it started. So yeah. uh, we could have just played six of us. So it was quite a quite a struggle at times to like get uh, eight other players to commit, you know, to play a, essentially a three <laughs> three round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and commit like uh, several hours, you know, like because like someone would. would Either playing themselves like online and like didn't want to um, didn't want to get distracted yeah. um, by doing this or like they were had other commitments. But uh, we, I think we played like in total. I think we played about fifteen simulations. Wow, that's and sometimes so sometimes people would be like, I I can only play for an hour. Or I can I can help you guys rank so you can get it going, and then I'll just dump my stacks to, to Martin and then you can forget like <laughs> and then you can uh, practice playing you know the big stack but yeah. like, we'll dump it to uh, to Joris or to someone else you know and so we were like we're practicing all the different scenarios that might occur and uh, that was uh, really helpful as well so I was like very well prepared to like becoming the short stack or becoming the big stack or yeah. being an yeah, in stack or all the do you think, based on, because WSOP changed the rules last year where they came back only a few days later, do you like right. that idea or do you think having more time in between is benefit? Um, I think it's, I think there's pros and cons. Um, you, you can look at it from different angles, like does it help the players? Uh, probably not. Uh, but it depends who you ask. Like some, I, I'm... Uh, I had this topic, topic discussed with a, a few players, and uh, some seem to prefer this format where you just play straight away. They don't want to wait, and uh, they they want to they want to keep the if if they made the final table, they want to keep that momentum going. You know, like they don't want to risk um, having a long break and let, letting like all the emotions and all their thoughts like um, mess with their heads and. So, yeah. And they also, some might not want other players to become better during the time. They might think that, like, okay, well, all these amateurs are going to get um, professional poker players to coach them and they're going to expose my leagues and whatnot. But mm -hmm. I think overall, like, from my perspective, like, I would much rather have, have the break and prepare uh, properly. For sure. This year, there's actually no break. What do you think of that? I th I'm pretty sure I read <laughs> something yeah. that it's, it's literally just going to play straight through. Oh, wow. Was, yeah, there's no, like awesome. last year we had a two-day, a three-day break? Two-day. Two-day break. And this year, yeah. I believe Remco was the one that tweeted out saying it's going straight through. So no break, just next day. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess TV we'll see. Coverage. TV coverage, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, you, you barely have time to play uh, your family and stuff. Right. Exactly. So. Okay. Um, uh, there's another question from Melly Bear Golrar. 
She wants to know your weekly workout routine or diet. Um, okay, I'll start with my workout routine. Um, it's, uh, sorry, I'm going to have you. No, yeah, <laughs> finish, finish the hand, absolutely. Yeah, just a second. Oh, there we go. We have a three bet. We're going to pause, <laughs> Melly. We're watching poker. <laughs> What do you got? <laughs> oh. Oh, we won. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to the work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I try to I try to mix it up um, by doing like different things uh, each time. So I try to run then twice a week, and I try to do um, uh, like functional uh, uh, functional exercises like kettlebells or um, battle ropes or um, like using medicine balls. Like yeah, I do some like like I don't know funky stuff. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> But uh, I feel like that's uh, that's working better for me, like for uh, for my body. Because uh, back in the day, I used to like when I was growing up and stuff, I used to to lift heavy weights, and I was doing that like five times a week, lifting as heavy as I could. And I was just slowly breaking down my body. And, right. Uh, I was as a result, I just get sick all the time, and uh, that wasn't. That wasn't that fun. Uh, so now I, I have a quite a crappy immune system, which isn't great for uh, playing poker and traveling in bunch either, because I get sick quite a lot. Yeah. So I have to be careful when I uh, structure my workouts so I don't break down my body too much. Uh, and I feel like doing these uh, uh, like functional training uh, stuff combined with running and um, maybe boxing like twice a week when I'm, I'm here in London. Uh, really helps uh, to build up my immune system rather than to break it down. Um, and as as for my diet, it's I don't I don't really follow like a, a particular diet. Uh, I just try to eat uh, like mostly whole foods. Like not by what I mean by that is. It's not like I always shop at Whole Foods. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I try to eat as little uh, processed uh, food as possible. So, like, staying away from like sugar and, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like pre made food and stuff like that. Fast food. Cool. Great. We have another question. Uh, what are your thoughts on playing GTO? Do you think reads are getting less important? Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've always like adapted a more of a exploitable style in poker, but now as as the game is uh, progressing, I think GTO is becoming more and more important. Uh, at least as a as a like as a baseline for your game. So I think ideally you wanna you wanna know how to play GTO or like close to. Um, and, GTO stands for a uh, game theory optimal for people who don't know. Um, so basically, you play a style that's that's impossible to exploit. That's essentially what it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, when so when players aren't playing GTO, like it's easier to uh, to exploit that and uh, and manipulate. Uh, especially weaker players to less experienced players to do stuff that you want them to do. Uh, oh, good luck, all in. <laughs> good luck, all in. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, he's ahead. Yeah. Hold, oh, he's hold. hold. <laughs> Let's nice, go. nice hand. <laughs> nice hand. Uh, and then it's like, you know, like that's. Kind of what makes me probably wrong in poker, you know, like that you 
have the ability to do these things, like like the bluffing aspect and like the psychology uh, of the game. So it's been sad that it's moving away from that and becoming much more um, science and, and math based um, as a whole. But I think there there's still room, especially uh, uh, on the live scene. There's still plenty of room to to find exploitable plays and uh, try new things. For sure. Uh, you said you're living in London now. You, I think you you moved there because it's easier for you to travel around, right? Say what? You're living in London as opposed to yeah. Stockholm now. So, do you prefer that better, or was it yeah, a I've been business in decision? For, uh, for over six years now. Right. Uh, I was uh, I was really quiet, um, and uh, yeah, I I prefer London to Stockholm. Uh, I think because. It's a much bigger city, and there's a lot more, a lot more people. <laughs> uh, good and bad, uh, it obviously creates um, sorry. Uh, it's all good. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. We're, we can see you're in a hand, so we understand. Don't worry. No, we can't see your hand, but we see you're in a hand. Good luck. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh. oh no! Oh no! Uh, all right, now we'll get a better conversation. <laughs> it's been pretty good so far. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, short answer. Yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Do you have anything else? Yeah. To um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, we have a bit of a list here, but. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I know you travel quite a bit. You play online quite a bit. Um, what are your plans for 2018? Because I know that um, there's been a lot uh, that's been happening. Like, do you, I don't know if you, do you play uh, a lot of cash games at all or just mostly tournaments? No, I only play tournaments and I okay. always only have to play tournaments. Okay, yeah, because I noticed that, you know, there's been a lot more uh, pros that are going on poker after dark. And so I guess I, I'm curious to know what, what you have planned for next year. I know we talked a bit about, you know, the first half of the year, but do you have anything else outside of poker? Um, any any plans? Any anything like that? Um, not really. No, it's just uh, just poker. On like paper, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a busy year. Yeah, for sure. There's, I mean, with with party poker, um, and now poker stars getting a lot more competitive. Um, I mean, there's like what Montreal, like there's a ten million dollar guarantee for just for the main. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's insane. So. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, going to be a busy year, so. For sure, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Do you try and keep the same the same schedule year in and year out? No, yeah, I don't really. I don't really have a schedule, uh, or like not a fixed one at least. I just look at the calendar and see like where the tournaments are that uh, I like to play, and I guess I I created sort of the habit of like going starting my year and. Skipping BZA, starting causing no pants, and then just take it from there. And, yeah. And, um, yeah. So this year, yeah, I'll probably, I'll, I mean, I'll definitely go to both Barcelona and Montreal for those big tournaments. Yeah. I'll probably skip Grand Final in Monaco, which I usually go to. I think that's that clashes with uh, Montreal, uh, and then back in London for Scoop, and then off the base. Cool. Nice. I know that um, you're probably a little bit biased towards WSOP having won the main event, but I mean, aside from that, is there like um, a certain stop slash tour that you prefer that you really love, or what's your favorite? Oh, um, my second favorite would be, yeah. uh, <laughs> be uh, ATP Barcelona. Nice. I've, we've heard that actually. I mean, like I've never been, but we've heard that it's uh, a favorite for a lot of pros. So. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, especially at uh, that, that time of the year, like during the summer, the like, casino, yeah. you know, being straight on the beach. And, uh, but actually, my, I, I think my second favorite is probably uh, Austin Williams. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I really like that stop. It's, uh, again, it's like the perfect time of the year because it's uh, summer in Melbourne and it's winter and cold in London. 
uh, and uh, it's during uh, the Australian Open, the tennis. I was just going to ask oh, you nice. if it was during that. <laughs> I really like tennis, yeah. yeah. I like to, to watch the live. Uh, it's great. And uh, it's, you yeah, know, is just a great city too, especially for food and coffee. Like, um, uh, I like my, my coffee. <laughs> so I have to go there just like for those for that purpose and then the tournament's great as well and like everyone's friendly the casinos it's great and you can walk everywhere it's perfect Roger Federer fan or Djokovic so uh, is it, are you Federer yeah actually I uh, went to the final last year uh, so that was uh, probably one of the better uh, sporting events that I've ever been to <laughs> for sure yeah it would be a ton of fun to go to mm-hmm. cool awesome well do you um, want to do your uh here? Sure. We just have a few like this or that questions for you to throw All at right. you. We've asked a couple already, but we'll uh, we'll go through. Um, live poker or online poker? Live. Steak, pota- steak and potatoes or pizza? <laughs> steak and potatoes. TV or movies? Uh, TV series. Cool. Survivor or Big Brother? None. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey or soccer? Uh, soccer or football. football Sorry, football in we, Europe. We we call it soccer here. I know it's it's, it's fake. I know. I'm so recognized these days. Uh, <laughs> all the basketball. Winter or summer? Um, that's actually tougher than you you think. I I love skiing. I know. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're all like. Dogs or cats? <laughs> cats. Do you have any? I have one, yeah. Cool. Helmuth or Negrano? <laughs> what a Negrano. question. I love it. Uh, Negrano. <laughs> Negrano, all right. Uh, arm day or leg day? Huh? Arm day or leg day at the gym? <laughs> <laughs> leg day. <laughs> cool. Uh, I have a question, and now that we're thinking of it, like, Aside from yourself, obviously you are an awesome poker player. Who is your absolute, hands down, favorite poker player? Favorite poker player? Yeah. <laughs> like in terms of skill. That, just like, if you had to, if you were like trapped on an island and can only be with one poker player, oh, who would it be? Oh, that's a completely different answer. <laughs> <laughs> And you, and you had like played heads up every single day. I guess skill is obviously a factor, but like just yeah, all around favorite poker player. Um, oh, we have a donation, but we can't see it. Hold on. Fifty dollars from Kevin Martin. Boom. Thank you, Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's doubled, so we got a hundred. Yeah, hundred. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin Martin. Appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, uh, okay, back to the question at hand. Yeah, uh, I, you know, this, I would actually pick one of my friends. So. Fair enough. <laughs> Which yeah, one? Uh, <laughs> We're going to make it tough. But even, even that's a hard question. Like, I don't want to be stuck with one of my friends for... <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, who's your fa- yeah, who's your favorite, just in general? Okay, um, I would probably say uh, Sam Chartier. Cool. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. we like that answer because he's because he's a uh, Canadian. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's a very nice guy. Yeah, oh, awesome. Okay. Um, we have another question here. With the growth of mixed games in recent years, are you dabbling more in games like PLO and Stud? And how important do you think being knowledgeable in these games will be in the future of poker? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not uh, at the moment. I'm. I've been strictly in no limit tournaments. Uh, no limit tournament doc, um, but uh, <laughs> I definitely think it's, you know, to learn. I'm, I'm just scared of going to the World Series and looking at the schedule, because, like, I know I play all, all the no limit events now, and my friends who also who, all, who are also playing in yeah, uh, mixed games, they just seem to, like, have zero time off. They're just going from tournament to tournament, and uh, I'm just afraid that I'm going to turn into <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Because <laughs> it does seem like a lot of fun, uh, but yeah, I do. I don't know. Maybe PLO uh, we've become closer to hold them, but I feel like 
if that was the case, it, it would have probably already happened by now. Like, PLO has been around for, for quite some time, and I don't really see any of the other games becoming as big as Holden or, or PLO. Right. Yeah. Do you play Chinese poker? Uh, I used to, yeah. <laughs> I stopped like, a few years ago. It's, it's pretty addictive, hey? <laughs> it is, yeah. Awesome. Uh, a lead-up question to that, I mean, I feel like the main event is a is a no-brainer answer, but Melly wants to know, besides the main event, what are your favorite events to play? I guess in terms of tournaments. My favorite uh, tournament events. You play a lot in the, like you've played the one drop almost every year, right? Yes. Oh, that's definitely, uh, yeah, that's definitely my uh, second favorite event to play. Uh, just like Super High Rollers and, and uh, Charity Tournaments are my favorites. Nice. We like because that. Then you get to play with the, like the, the businessmen, especially the charity tournaments. Like that's my favorite type of events, because um, everyone's everyone's having a good time. You know, you get to meet a lot of uh, very very inspiring people, and uh, uh, it's just it's like playing a home game, you know, more than um, a serious tournament. So that's yeah, that's uh, always fun. Awesome. Uh, Kmart's in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Kmart. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we're now at, uh, we're just over $2,000 uh, raised over the past couple of days. So thank you to everyone um, that's donated so far. We've got a long way to go. Yeah, so it'll be fun. Excited. We're going to be here all week. So if you're hanging out on poker and you have nothing to do, throw up Twitch. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you're probably late there, right? So probably let you go yeah is there anything you want to add um you know i know that um you have a busy schedule it's the holidays and stuff but anything else you want to add um you know before we head out uh no i just want to thank you guys for yeah first for having me on but also taking the initiative and, and uh hosting this thing it's uh it's awesome for sure thank you so uh, much yeah we're, we're we're really happy to do it so you're on you're on every day uh, the rest of the week? Yeah. Yeah, we're on till uh, the end of Friday. We've got tomorrow we have Ryan LaPlante. Uh, Thursday okay. we have uh, Patrick Serta. He's uh, he's also going to do some uh, donation matching up to 5K. Uh, Friday mm -hmm. we have Jen Shahade. And mm -hmm. next week we're going to take a few days off for Christmas. We're going to do, we're going to end the charity stream with a 24 hour stream. Uh, starting on December 26th. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not sure how we're going to stay awake, but... Yeah, yeah. What team? Uh, yeah. yeah, so we're going to be here. This for... year, yeah, we're going to be here We're uh, next week on the December 26th. Okay. So we'll be Boxing, here. Right? Yeah, 20, 24 yeah. hours. We're going to have Kristen Bicknell, Andrew Barber, and Ari Engel is in Amsterdam. He's going to be calling in from there. So uh, right. yeah, cool. that's our schedule. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> You need someone more, someone else to talk to. Yeah. Absolutely, okay. we'd Perfect. love to have you on. Okay. We'll uh, maybe have you on playing poker and maybe go over some hands and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boxing, but you don't want to leave the house anyway. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely boxing. not. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, we just got a, a dump of snow here in Calgary the past couple of days, so I'm pretty sure Adam and I are just not leaving till like the oh, end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome! Thank you so much. Uh, have a really good Christmas, and uh, hopefully, we'll Thank talk you. to you again. Take care. Right, Thanks awesome. for coming on. Thanks, Martin. Of course. Yeah. Take care, guys. Awesome. Bye. See you. Bye. All right, guys. So that was it.